Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, which is Squarespace. More on that later in the video. So it might be late, it might be winter, it might be freezing outside. I don't know about you guys, but as of recording this video today, we've had a lot of snow. That's my heater. I'm gonna go up this ladder and fix that. <sighs> Where even was I? So yes, it has been terrible weather. Despite that, I do have a planned haul for you guys. I know, I know. I think I got these in a couple of days ago, so they're actually still in the packaging, but I really want to show you some stuff because I have an item here from my house. I've got a couple of things here that I've never had before. Very good, and it takes a lot to say that on the channel these days. I have a couple of things that I... I got another one for myself. I have something that I know you guys like, so I got more of them in, so I can get them to you in spring. I've got one slight disaster in the mail, but I want to show you it anyway, just because it is gorgeous. So I will show you what it is, and I'll probably put a photograph up. But anyway, without further ado, let's just get into the haul. This is pretty much a variegated haul. I can almost call it that. It's not 100% variegated, but it's probably 95% variegated. So if that's your bag, keep on watching. Right, first plant. This is quite interesting and I've never heard of them before, but I really like them. This one's actually a little bit wilty. I think it's fine, but it has come quite a long way and it's come in bad weather. So if these, any of these plants do well, I'll be quite happy to be honest. It's just one of those things. I bought this plant, never seen it before. Not saying it's super rare. I actually have no idea. I literally have no idea how common, rare or anything it is, but it was so pretty I had to try it. You'll see it in a second, but it's sort of a mix between mint and pink. Kind of like a whipple way, except it's a homolamina. I know, really cool. So this here, I do believe, or at least I bought it as, I bought it as a homolamina pink diamond. Really sorry, I've got a bit of a runny nose. I've just had some soup and it had chili in it, so I'm a bit, a bit emotional, really. This little guy, he's tiny and he does feel a bit flimsy, but as I say, he's, you know, he's just been shipped. He's got some good root. Let's see if I can show you that. Hopefully it should focus. He's got some good root. He is small. He's a little, a little dude, but I really like this guy and I might just put him in my house. This guy's really cute. I have a feeling it will do well in my house. I have a couple of homolamina here. There's a couple of different types. I have the, the rubescence variegated one that is, can you see it on this frame? No, it's off frame, sort of over that way. I have a couple of other things as well that I don't particularly care for, but they're in here. But this I thought was really cool. So I'll take you on a little tour of the plant. We have a little bit of mintiness sort of here. Sorry, I'll get my face out of the camera. That, that was a bit much. So we have this here. We have a little bit more mintiness here. Where's the one with the chunk? Yeah, there's a little one here with a green chunk on it, which I thought was really cute. This leaf is dead. This is going to obviously come off. It's obviously one of the lower leaves. And then you've got these lovely pink blush leaves. So I can only assume by looking at this that the plant works by releasing, releasing, I don't know. By giving out a pink leaf and it's slowly turning like this, mint. How good is that? Again, it's just one of these things I've never heard of. I've always got this thing about mint plants and I, I really, I'm starting to like a few different things, but it really depends. It's got to really be mint, if that makes sense. It's got to be this frosty in-between color that I would classify as a mint. So a little bit like the color that Florida ghosts go. This definitely has that. And I'm really, really keen to see what happens. This one is actually changing a little bit. And if I just show you down the center of this, this leaf here, you can see that it is changing a bit. Can you tell? I wonder. You might be able to, you might not. So if I just show you this pink one that is, n I mean, it's kind of on the way. If I show you that there, sorry guys, I know I'm all over the place. If I show you that, and then I'll show you that one. Can you see what I'm saying? It's going a little bit green there. So all in all, a kind of adorable plant. And I would quite like this one in my house. Plus it's small. Good start. Why not? This is actually not the plant in this video that I said I've bought for my house. I do actually have something very specific for my house. So I'm looking forward to being able to show you that. But this might be a little bit of a contender. He's kind of cute. I hope he doesn't die on me. These roots do look good in here. He's been here maybe three or four days now and he hasn't tanked. It's not to say he won't. That is not to say he won't. But so far he's been good. I think, and this is what I bought it as, Homolamina Pink Diamond. So... How beautiful is it? I really like that. I don't know how it's looking on camera because it's actually hard to see at the minute, but I quite like that. I think it's really pretty. Okay, we're immediately going to follow that with one of these guys. I've shown you these before. Sorry, this has been not long shipped, so it's still a little bit vertical like that because that's how they get packed. But this here, as you might be able to tell, 
is one of the mint peace lilies that I have. Now I have a couple in stock that could go out if I do a sale before Christmas, which I, I'll tell you now I am thinking of doing that. So I have a couple in that tray that I can let go because I've just bought some of these in. So these ones can rehabilitate for spring and then I can let the ones go that I've had for, I don't even know how long I've had them now. Yeah, I want to tell you about this really, really quickly if you've never seen this before. This is basically a peace lily. It's a spathophyllum, except it's mint. The weird thing about this, I don't know if it's coming off on camera. Yeah, it is. So you might be able to notice there's a bit of a yellow tone here. And when I got them in originally, I've spoke about this before, I was a little bit... Mm, I wasn't loving it because I thought, oh no, they're all going to come out and they're all going to die. But this is actually how they come in, guys. And I've, I've had enough of them now to say that that's how they come in. Every single one does it. Yeah, they, if you compare it to my skin, which isn't yellow, but you know what I mean, there's more yellow tones in it. That is quite yellowy compared to, say, the mint when it cools down. But this is how it sort of grows, guys. It comes in with this yellowy tone and it disappears. Because if I show you some of the older leaves, especially at the bottom, can you tell? Hopefully you can. They are all just very, very, very minty. There's no yellow at all. So if you like these, keep an eye out on my website for them because they're absolutely incredible. I love these. These are tough as nails, by the way. This has come in like this. It's not going to change. It's not going to wilt. It's not going to do anything because the last ones didn't and they were fine. So you can kind of tell how sturdy these are, even just to the homolamina that's a bit wilted. These are absolutely tough as nails. I would love to see these hang around for a long time, a long, long time. I really am quite taken with these and I probably will put one of these in my house. It will probably take place actually of my variegated peace lily that you may have seen on last week's video, just because it's lovely, it's big, it's not really variegating for me anymore. It's just become a peace lily. I will always keep it here, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to throw it away or anything, but this being so nice, might have to put it in my house. A lot of my house is, is a lot of off-whites, so a frosted type leaf would go really well with that. So I'm not gonna linger on these, just to let you know I have some more and I'll probably put some on the site because I have some that have already been rehabbing. In fact, I've got one down here that has been rehabbing because they're all planted up. Just so you know. Yeah, you can kind of tell, to be honest. There you go. There's one of them that I've had for a long time in Lekka. Just so you know, they're growing Lekka just fine. So there you are. They're actually, they're probably the same size. Don't mind that, it's just old moss. Probably the same size. Definitely minty as such. There's a new leaf coming out. But yeah, that's them. Very, very pretty plants, guys. Very, very pretty plants. Can you see me from here? Yeah, okay, so I should probably explain. I didn't know if you'd be able to see that. I'm I'm in gear right now. I'm in wellies and everything, so I, I look different. I get that, but it's snowing outside. What can I say? Right, let's pop that down. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. Not only that, but Squarespace helps me optimize my visibility on the internet by showing me what people are searching for in order to find my shop. For example, here you can see various ways of Googling my shop name, plus a search for a specific houseplant, which is the Philodendron Whipple Way, which was a bit of a surprise to me, actually. If you want to create a really sleek, efficient website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. And then we're going to move on to this bad boy. Now this bad boy is probably also going in my house. Hang on a minute. A lot of the stuff here is going in my house. Okay, there's more than I thought. I wasn't lying. There's just way more than what I thought was going in my house. The next plant I have to show you is this guy. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people like this guy. This here, can you tell? Yes, it's so cute. This here is Anthurium vitarifolium variegated. This is one of my sort of, well, how would you call it? My much loved house plants of all time whether they're rare or not, literally this guy's in it because he's brilliant. And I mentioned him in last week's video. I was talking about the green version, don't get me wrong, but this kind of demonstrates the point. I do have green versions of this plant. They're around. Can't see past my softboxes right now, but they're around. So I do have green versions of these and it doesn't have to be variegated, as I say. So I want to show you that as well. This is the new leaf. He's very, very soft and nice, but he's got a good amount of variegation of him. If I stop waving him around, I'll show you him on camera there. I'll just slightly rotate him so you can see. How pretty is he? He's really pretty. Him or the other guy, which is, where does he live? Where does he live? I put him back just yesterday. Here we go, hang on. Yeah, okay, this guy's much bigger, actually. This guy. 
This is the other guy, if you remember, that I've had for a little while. I showed him on last week's video. So that's one, that's two. So I have kind of siblings now. I might keep the bigger one here, actually, having said that, because I can see nodes here that could be cut, whereas he doesn't have any. So I might take the baby and keep this one here because it's sort of suited to the climate. But how cute, though. How cute. They're so adorable. See, at some point, needless to say, off the back of this video, you will get another report with me because I have a lot of reporting to do. Nothing's gone in the house yet, plant-wise, but I need to start. But even if that's just me sort of planting things up and leaving them here to sort of settle in the pots and then move them, that's fine. Might not move anything till after Christmas, just so if I have family around, nothing gets disturbed or knocked or anything. Stuff like this, you will probably see me pot up very soon. So if you want to follow the journey of some of these plants, then stay tuned throughout December or January, and I'll be potting some of these guys up. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, they're getting quite interesting now. I'm gradually making them more and more interesting as we go along. So I'm going to leave him. Right, I'll show you these. This is just kind of like an FYI, I bought some. So I have some and they're really good quality. So I'm going to show you these as well, but I won't linger on them. You should be able to tell what they are. They're amazing. I do like this plant. It's not my favorite plant and I've said this before. And well, just being honest, really. This here is Philodendron Giganteum. Now, it's not Philodendron Giganteum Blizzard. It's just Philodendron Giganteum, guys. I could go on and on and on about what I think about people giving plants weird names. And I know every time I do, there's always someone in the comments that goes at me for it. I don't care. I don't like to do that. So at some point, because these aren't for me, I think this is the only small one I have. The rest are true to size, which is if you're wanting a reference, it's this size on me. So when these do eventually go, that's kind of how big they are. I will be listing them as just variegated gigantium. I might say, oh, it's got good variegation, but I won't be giving it a stupid name. And it's, it's just how I prefer to be as a seller. It just is. That was kind of all I wanted to say about these, other than I got them in and they're very adorable. They naturally grow like this. You don't really have to worry about reversion. Not really. It can happen. I mean, I have a large one in the corner. If you remember the Gigantium that sort of fell on itself and sort of split in half. So I have him and he's never been high variegation, but these are probably going to be fine. I can't see them, you know, failing on me. I don't think I've ever had any that do it. So if they've got a lot in them, then you're all right. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like a tie. If a Monster Tie Constellation has really weak variegation, then you it might stay weak. But if it has strong, it's probably going to stay strong and vice versa. But yeah, that's him and him. Him and him, him and her. Some really nice leaves on this one, though. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. And then this one. I don't know if I can get them by my head. Yeah, they are. They are honestly, they're lovely plants. It's just, I've said this before, but what I don't love, and you can really say it on this, actually. The only thing I don't like about this plant, if you're wondering, is the petiole to leaf ratio. This is how I always describe it. And literally, this is what I mean. Generally, you have a longer petiole than you do a leaf. So when you see all these leaves, the young ones aren't as bad, but when they start getting a bit older, they get a bit more like this. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the ratio is just a little bit off there for me. It's just not my thing. I think you can get things that are a bit more balanced. But hey, a lot of people still love these. A lot of people still love these. And they are good plants. And they're very tough. I'm not going to knock them. They're very, very tough. These grow really, really big. So if you want something really, really big and variegated, these are probably very good for you. They're called Gigantium for a reason. You feel me? Philodendron Gigantium. I've got some in. I'll be letting them go at some point. These are not for me. I can't imagine having these in my house. I just don't have any desire to. But if you like them, then each to their own. Oh, let's cover this guy because I feel really sorry for this guy. I really do. Oh, bless him. Okay. When these plants came in, I didn't have time to do a haul for you guys. I basically, I'd been out in the cold all day. I'd come back from the airport. It was quite late by that point. I had a lot to do the next day and the day after. I'm filming this on Saturday. I couldn't film it soon enough. Right, that's what I'm getting at. I kind of knew this was going to happen to this plant. There's not a lot I could do about it, which is a real shame because when this plant arrived, the plant I'm about to hold up for you, it was immaculate. It was absolutely brilliantly how well it shipped. It was just unbelievable. All the leaves are intact. It just looked gorgeous, tons of color and everything else. But now it don't look so good. So what I will probably do, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do as soon as you see it. And uh, <laughs> please welcome this guy. So I don't know if you can tell how he was, right? Let's just, before I tell you what he is, I'll tell you who, who the kind of person he was, right? He was very vibrant. He was full of life. I, I imagine he enjoyed going out. He probably don't now, but he was quite pink. Now that's the newest leaf, so it hasn't gone super pink. You can sort of see it on the bottom. It's pretty nice. But if I show you this, can you see what he was? He was nice. So there's this leaf here. There's this shriveled up number here that also had a lot of pink. I'm hoping this is coming off on camera, guys. I totally can't tell. And then there's this one here. 
as well. Can you see that? Yeah. The best one to tell is, is probably this one because it's not quite fully shriveled yet. Yeah, that's what he looked like. And everything apart from this new leaf, which is, you know, kind of on its way out, was like that. And there was, what, four or five of them. I think even these were going as well. These were smaller ones. These have dried, dried off real quick, actually. So he does look miserable. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert for you what he should have looked like. And his name, if you may be wondering, because I think a lot of people will like this, because I was quite taken by it. And I don't even love pink, and I was taken by it. This is apparently Musa No-No. Literally, no, no. I think that is right. I think that is his name. Now, you're probably thinking, oh God, what are you going to do? It's dying. Bananas tend to do this. This is why I expected it. Um, I do still have my variegated bananas, the Florida, Musa Florida. You can't see them, I don't think, unless I wave my hand here. Can't even see on the viewfinder if you can see it. I doubt you can. But I have two beautiful Musa Floridas here. One died, one rotted. Didn't save it in time. But the other two are going strong. But my point is, when I got those in, they sort of did this. I think you guys might have seen it the day I hold them, but I hold them much faster. So you saw them much faster from delivery to seeing them on camera. It might have been less than 24 hours. I can't actually remember. Whenever I said it was on camera, that's when it was. Or by some sheer fluke, they just did better in shipping. I'm not sure. This guy, I kind of expected this from. This isn't really a surprise. It's a shame because he looked so good. But what can you do? So what I will probably do is he will get chopped like that. He will get planted, he will be given all the same treatment that my other bananas got because it worked for them, and hopefully he will grow back and he will be amazing. And if, I mean, I could put it in the house, I don't know. This is my problem, guys. This is my problem. There are so many nice plants that when you see my house and you see the inside of my kitchen, eventually, whenever that is, you will understand why I'm umming and ahhing about what to put in there. And it's not because it's bad light, it's because it's amazing light. It is amazing light. It's got skylights in it, right? So I can grow nearly anything in there, as long as it doesn't mind being blasted anyway. So I'm kind of on an orange because I can get Strelitzia to grow in there really well. I could get my Florida to grow in there really well. I could probably get this to grow in there really well. I've kind of got a lot of possibilities. I don't really know how it's going to go. So I'm looking at this going, ooh, that would be good. But, uh, you know, we'll have to just see how he does because it could be a really bad situation and he might just rot look up the draw, isn't it? So we will see how it goes, but I hope you can appreciate how amazing he actually was. One more time, see if I can... I tell you what, you don't even need my face in it, do you? Can you see how he might have been? Because obviously he's gone brown, it wasn't quite like that. And you will absolutely get updates on him. Even if he dies, I will let you know. Just keep asking me because I keep forgetting. Always forget, always forget updates. We have three plants left. Oh yeah. And they're good ones. They are really, really good ones. I like them a lot. So what can I do next? I'm going to do this big boy because he's the biggest plant of today. He's not huge, but he's the biggest one of today. You may have seen his cousin before on the channel, but he's very nice. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with him. <sighs> I may have got another one. And this is his new leaf. <sighs> Isn't he great? So if you don't know what this is, let me bring him up. Oh! Oh my god. Look at him. This, if you don't know, is Philodendron Golden Dragon Variegated. And I love the green version. The green version is on my wall. It's grey. I cannot knock it. If you can't get your hands on a variegated one, honest to god, get the green one. It will not let you down. It is tough as nails. Which is another reason why I've invested in the variegated version, because although they can be a bit unstable, when you get ones with genetics such as this, which I hope you can see in the stems, I'm not going to struggle too much. If anything, I'll just get too much variegation. But as soon as you cut them, things tend to go awry. The whole plant isn't super variegated. I hope you can see that. Yeah, you sort of can. Do my best, guys, honestly. I'm wearing green, which don't help. But he's all right. Like, this is nice. We love that. That's the oldest leaf. This has virtually nothing on it. And then it's gone kapow! And then you get the top bit. And from that, I believe we've got this. So we're... <laughs> It's getting a bit much, but clearly there's a lot of green in the plant, so it kind of depends on where those new nodes grow from when it's cut. If it grows on this side, then we're not going to get a great yield. If it grows on this side, we might get too much yield. So it's kind of just, mm, it's, just it's tough. Variegated plants and propagation, it's tough. And it's you can't necessarily choose what happens, but I do love this guy, and I had to get another one. I do still have the other one, by the way. I've got all of it, I think. Where is he? 
Where is he? I saw him literally the other day. Oh, he's here. Again, probably can't see him there. Maybe, maybe not. You won't see him on camera, but this is the tray he's in anyway. So that's him there. Oh, has he had a new leaf out? Yep. So I would love to get some cuttings going of that over winter. Probably this as well. See how it goes. Because if I take something to my house, I've mentioned this before, but I don't want to take something like this. You, you feel me? I don't really want to take something like that. I'd rather take something a bit more than that. Just because I prefer something a bit more sustainable. It's not about having like super, super very I think that trend, I don't think that trend's gone now or people still like to do that. Let me know if you do or you prefer less. I don't know if I've asked this question before. Like, what's your percentage, right? Here's the question. What is your percentage variegation on, on a plant, on a leaf, whatever, that you prefer? For me, it, it, I think it was always around about 50%. At most, I like to go to 60, 40. Worst, maybe 30 I could go down to 25, it depends on the plant. But I'm really curious what you guys either like in a plant or what you look for in a plant. Really, really, really curious. So just write down the, the just you can just put the ratio if you want, like 50-50, 60-40. If I get a load of those in my comments, I know what they are. <laughs> for me, that is too much. That's that's fine. It's just kind of concentrated in the top. That's obviously not enough. That's a waste of time. We don't like that. That's that's right. Um, but that's not bad. Would just be nice to have a little bit more than that. So let me know what you think. I will let you know what I decide to do with him. As you can probably tell from shipping, he's solid as a rock. He's really, he's just sturdy. Like, can you tell? He's just, he's just a sturdy boy. So I'll put him down like that. You can go back in his little bucket because he's sat in a bucket to keep him upright. Then I'm going to show you, yes, show you the thing that I've actually bought for the house, specifically for the house. Right, so... I'm going to hold up the plant and I'm going to tell you why I bought it. But if you are a bit of a connoisseur of plants, or at least this genus of plant, then you might understand why I've done it. So the plant I'm going to hold up for you is, he's nice. He is nice. Is this guy. Hopefully you can see him well, because I realise my shelves don't provide the best backdrop for this. Da -da -da -da. How cool is he? So this is Monstera Burley Marks Flame. And... It's, oh, it's so cool, guys. I've had this in the shop before, by the way. This is not a new plant whatsoever, but the size of it definitely is, and I'll get into that in a minute. So I've had this before, and I can tell you that they grow really, really slowly. This is why I bought it for the house. I don't necessarily want, with my workload and everything else, I don't necessarily want, guys, plants that are hard maintenance, that grow really fast. I don't really want any of that. And I realized that's kind of like the anti of what a lot of people do want because they want plants that they can either invest in and make some money off or they just get a real thrill out of seeing them grow. I totally get that. Like I am completely on board with that. But a lot of the plants in my house, or at least a, a large percentage of them, for me should be something that I just don't got to worry about at all. And that's one of the reasons why I think this is one of my chosen Monstera to go in the house. It's different enough that you would go, ooh, and again, it's not about rarity, just the shape of this is just awesome to me. But it, it's still easy care and it's still very, very, very slow. Like I've made no secret of this. I'm pretty sure most people that grow these will tell you they are not the quickest. Some people have more success than others, obviously. But for me, oh, literally, literally, you could grow a beard waiting for this to grow. I could grow a beard waiting for this to grow. No problem. Therefore, <laughs> perfect for the house. So I'm not going to, literally, as you can see, it's so wrapped. I'm not going to show you in it, but I think you could probably tell how many, you know, nodes are in there. So I, I'm not going to propagate from him. I'm just going to leave him be. And oh, thank you, Monster. And I'm just going to pot him up and put him in the house and just let him sit I feel like maybe my living room, but I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to show you the leaves up close. If you haven't seen this monster before, it might be something you really like. I assume that most people know about this, but I always get surprised because not everyone follows these things all the time. So I'm going to give you a nice close up for this if you don't know what I'm on about. And I just show you, if I put my hand behind a leaf, can you see how that differs to a regular monstera? A EG, I should clarify, EG like a monstera deliciosa. Can you see? There's a reason why it's called Burley Marks Flame, and that's because the leaves look, I mean, they look quite flamey, don't they, right? So you don't really get holes in these, it's just fenestrations, and the fenestrations have, this is a good example, actually, I'm going to keep holding up this one. They have huge gaps in between them, can you see that? They're very, very, very cool plants. They're really sturdy, really awesome in that sense. The petiole to leaf ratio is not amazing. I know, I know I've just um, said that about the Gigantium, 
it's true. This isn't fantastic for that. It's not my prettiest Monstera because I love a good Delicio, so you guys know that. And that's not to say that I won't have one in the house, by the way, at all. It's just this is something that I know would definitely probably do well. I suspect as well with its leathery leaves because these are really leathery. Like, I'm not sure I've had a plant with leaves this leathery, but they should withstand low humidity a little bit better. So it's another reason I'm choosing this for the house. Very slow growing, don't expect it to change much. If it never changed, I'd be pretty happy. I'd be very, very happy. But these leaves, you don't think you're going to be able to even see the texture on them. You might not be able to, but it's literally like leather. It's even got a grain to it like leather. It's a little bit like, if you felt it, Anthurium vitarifolium, except there's more of a grain there. It's a little bit waxier and there's more of a grain. It's about as tough as that nearly. It's not a million miles off, I wouldn't say. But if anyone's good at describing the feel of these, by the way, in the comments, and you think I've butchered that, feel free to describe how they feel. But they are very, very, very thick. Very, very, very thick. So. That's him. He's got a new leaf coming out. Obviously the tip has gone a little bit awry there, but he's been shipped. It's going to happen, but I really, really like him. So at some point you will see me probably planting this bad boy up either on a point of view type chores video, which I'll talk to you about at the end of this video, or just a regular repot with me. I'm sure you'll see a lot of these potted up. So I'm going to pop him down and I'm going to show you the next plant because it's, it's pretty good. This next plant is, I will not lie to you, it is what I have always called Marmite. And some of you might already know what that plant is or have some ideas, maybe a, a list of three or four plants that you think it is. And feel free to keep guessing as I explain this plant to you. It's got a, a good, interesting botanical history to it. It is definitely an acquired taste. It is unusual, hence it is an acquired taste. It has been tissue cultured. It, what else, what else, what else? It has a dupe for it, sort of. In other words, a plant that is similar to it, that if you like this plant and you couldn't afford it, you could get something similar. It has a dupe. I don't like the dupe because it's very difficult and it's notorious on this channel. So people that watch my channel every week, you should be shouting at the TV right now what plant this is. If you need one last bit of help to narrow it down, it's a philodendron. So without further ado, I have bought a philodendron UPI. Except you're probably thinking, yeah, you've got loads of those. Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. But I don't have a variegated one. And I've wanted one for a long time. And I will talk you through this purchase. So this is not the strongest variegate in the world, right? I'll say that straight off the bat. If you wanted to buy a variegated UPI, this is a nice one. I'm not knocking it. It's lovely but it's not as strong as maybe it could be. And that's one of the reasons why I have it, because it was cheaper. <laughs> Just gonna be totally honest with you, it was cheaper. I got a better deal on this and it was all about what I could afford and what I couldn't afford and, and all the rest. So I bought this one. There are much better specimens out there. I will be completely transparent with you. That's the reason why I picked this one. I take care of them really well in here. For me personally, they grow very, very, very fast. They propagate beautifully. I don't have a problem with them. They're nice little earners, even the green form is still a very nice little earner. So it made sense for me to buy this guy. I knew it would ship well. I've had such experience shipping with them. I've had good experience with them being shipped to me in the past with different versions, either babies, large ones. I've even had tissue culture ones in. I've had a few different things in and they've all shipped beautifully. It's a tough plant. No wonder it's being passed around, it's a tough plant. But I really, really wanted a variegated one. So that is him. And again, he hasn't been unwrapped yet. He's still in his packaging, all the rest. Haven't had him in long. He's just lovely. He can't be cut yet, I suspect. Ben will probably want to cut this very quickly and there will be an argument about it. So just letting you know, Ben. Although to be honest, by the time you see this video, he may have already chopped it. I don't know. But Ben's wanting to chop this anyway and start propagation on it. That is what this is for. So this isn't really a one for me. It's not one for the house, nothing like that. This is basically for the chop, for the shop. So I will show you him up close because he's quite cute. But I realize, and this is why I said it was in a quiet taste, not everyone is, is keen on this and that's totally cool. But I'm going to show you it anyway. I'll start with the best leaf, I think. Hopefully it does focus on the leaf and not moi. I just drag that up. See, this leaf's got a good amount, but I think this is the first or second leaf. I, I suspect it's the first leaf in the cut. Then we've got this leaf here, which is, uh, could be the latest, not entirely sure. This leaf here, which has much less on it, but not none. And then, and then, and then, and then, we have this leaf here. I can see that's trying to focus on my hand, apologies. 
we have this one here that is a little bit like that. So as you can see, it's not absolutely insane variegation, but it is there and it might get worse, but it might get better. It's, it can go one of two ways. I can see a lot of good variegation in this petiole and I'm actually gonna try and show you it because this one with the strongest leaf on has a lot of variegation. Not only that, but this leaf here has a lot as well. So I think if it was chopped, it's it's got a good chance. So let me try and show you this petiole here and hopefully you can see it if I just rotate that. Hopefully it comes off on camera. There's a lot there. The other one I think was this one here. If I start rotating things, hopefully you can see the variegation in there. So sort of hopeful, I would say. I wouldn't say it's gonna be a resounding success. We will see, things happen. I've, I've had more surprises than that in this shop, but that's what I've got him for. So that is variegated UPI. He lovely, but he's not for me, if you know what I mean. He's not for my personal use, he's for the shop. So let's see how he goes. And of course, of course, you will get an update. I'm gonna probably start on this reasonably soon for spring, I think, and get this out as soon as possible. See if we can, see if we can get it looking cute, looking variegated and looking sexy and finding its way into someone's home. And that concludes my plant haul today. Now, before you go very, very, very quickly, if I could have you for one minute, I'm going to, as soon as this video is done, I'm going to record what I like to call a point of view sort of plant chores video. I'm gonna give it a good go. And whatever quality it comes out, guys, I'm gonna upload it. So you will see that, I think, I don't know when you'll see it actually. I'm stood here thinking, hang on, will you see it before or after this video? I don't know. But at some point on this channel, there will be a video and it probably says plant chores POV or plant chores GoPro or something like that. If you'd like to see if that's the type of content that you like, please do give it a click, even if it's for a couple of minutes. If you don't like it, that's fine. Just leave me some feedback. I'm more just wanting to see how that style of video works for you guys and what you think. So if you see that, either it's up now or it's coming up very shortly, then please let me know what you think of it. And if you don't like it, that's absolutely fine. Just leave me a comment. But I just, it was just based off a really weird idea uh, that I had in a repot a couple of weeks ago. So anyway, before I go and stick a camera onto my face, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this haul. There's a lot of plants here that I'm really excited about, namely this little guy. I'm really actually very excited about him. He is a bit wilty, but he feels strong in the petiole, so hopefully he'll be okay. But there's loads of plants here that I'm excited about, and I can't wait to see how they get on. So, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.